hi my friends welcome back to my channel and if you're new here uh thanks for dropping in i thought today we would do a little um landscape painting watercolor landscape and i just want to show you just how easy this is when it's done you'll just marvel at uh, the fact that it wasn't as difficult as you thought it might be so hope you're all well now here i have this is to fit in a five by seven mat and i've taped off my edges um, simply because it helps hold the paper down people also like the revealing when you pull the tape off so yeah i enjoy it when i watch a video and somebody pulls the tape off i don't know there's some sort of satisfaction there so I've marked off the area that I want to work in. This is my background. This will be my foreground. So I've put this tape here. Now remember that the tape under here counts for the foreground. So not the tape under here. The paper under the tape from this point down is your foreground. So my background is about a third. My foreground is about two thirds. Okay. So I'm just going to use uh, Winter and Newton paints. I'm using a size 8 brush right now just to uh, get my skyline on. And I'm going to wet my paper. It's 100% cotton. It's not good quality paper. It was paper I decided to try out. And I can't waste. can't afford to waste. So... I mean, it's not bad. It's just uh, when I take the tape off, um, the, fib pr the fibers in the paper tend to pull off too. So that's not a good thing. So it was less expensive than Arches and it's 100% cotton. So I'm hoping that uh, it works well for taking in the paint. Okay. Actually, before we get started, I have... Uh, I'm just curious if you'd be interested in learning how to do a drawing like this. This is not complete. Um, we'll complete it when the day comes to do the video. Uh, a drawing like this and then watercolor paint uh, this drawing. Now this, again, is easier than it looks. looks uh, well, it doesn't look hard, but <laughs> I think it's marvelous how it turns out just with the uh, you know, a little bit of instruction. So if you're interested in learning how to uh, do this sort of drawing and then the painting after, let me know in the comment section. I'll be sure to do a video on this in the near future. I have a couple of videos that are already ready to schedule to come out in the next week or so. So it would be after that. But let me know if you're interested in that. Okay, so let's get started on today's little painting. And I did a video similar to this last year and thought I would do another because it seemed to be quite popular. Okay, the background. I'm going to start with some cobalt blue going in a vertical direction. Just to give the indication of movement in the sky. And then I'm going to come in with some orange. Don't want it too, too evident. I don't want it to take over the sky. And maybe a little bit of yellow, I think. Okay. So I'm going to dry that and then we'll come back and continue. So I have my paint dried. I'm going to peel off my center tape here. So now we have a nice clean line there for our horizon. Now we can come in and put in our, I want to give the indication of a lake or a river. So, and we're putting birch or aspen trees in the foreground, but this area here is going to be 
water. So I'm going to start with um, some nice soft cerulean blue, fairly wet brush. Not only coming close to this line because I want a bit of a, to show a bit of a shoreline there. I think I'll come in with a little bit of a darker blue, so I'm coming in with cobalt blue. Okay, and yet a little bit more of the cobalt blue, a little less diluted. So there we have it. So again, I'm going to dry that and then we were going to uh, bring in our background and then our trees. So that's dry. Now I will come in with a 01 micron pen and I'm just going to sort of scratch in what will be my trees. And this is just to guide me a bit. Helps me decide on the density and the height. And I feel a little bit in more, a little bit more in. <laughs> Um, to indicate sort of brush. Not fussing too much. Okay, and then we'll come in with our paint. I'm going to start with a smaller brush. It's about a size two, uh, but I may end up changing. I think I'll try the size one. No, actually it's size three. Okay, I'm going to start with this. I'm not sure I'm going to continue with it. It may just be too small for my purpose. Going in with some Payne's Gray. And just dotting in my trees. Just wanted to be sure you could see me mixing my paint. 
it's really important for some to see that so as you can see varying the height of the trees and the trees in the foreground are going to be darker than the ones in the background so I have some lighter ones here I'm putting in and then I will come in with some more paint for a darker image in the front Now you can do all the background first, if that's how you choose to do it. And then bring in your stronger color in the front after, or you could do it like this, just as you go along. So I'm going to finish putting in my trees. I think you get the idea here. Fill in if you feel it's a little too sparse. And remember to uh, vary the height. I'm going to finish that and then we'll come back and continue. Okay, so I have all my trees on my, you know, horizon here on my tree line and as you can see I came in with some white because I do want to indicate either aspen or birch um, that there be a few of them in this forest I mean pretty odd that we're going to have three here and there are none in the background so just with my gel pen my Signo Uniball gel white gel pen I uh, set those in and I'm going to come in with my Micron 01 pen again and just indicate some bark lines here. And you'll see that more when we do the, uh, the trees that are in the foreground. Just fairly light here. We don't need it to stand out too much and some some branches I'm going to change over to my 04 just because it's a little bit thicker just light indication of branches here All right, that will do. All right, we're going to come in and do the foreground now. And for this, I'm using gouache, just because it's thicker and gives us a better um, idea of texture. Now I'm just going to come in with my size eight brush. Now my brush is damp, not really wet, and I'm rolling it in the gouache. And then I'm going to hold my brush like this and bring it from maybe about here up through my painting, all the way outside of my painting, and not straight up and down. Tilt it a wee bit to the right.
Now clearly my brush needs to be a wee bit more wet, so I'm going to do that. And you'll get a feel of this, how thick you want it, how much gouache you want on your brush. There we go. I added more water. We can always come in with uh, more gouache for our painting. Now I'm going to do two more. This one fairly straight up and down. And this one tilted somewhat to the right. Now we use the gouache to add texture and it is quite opaque. And like I said, we can come in and add a little more once this is dry. So there's our trees for the foreground. Okay, so we're all dry now. And this is where I come in with my micron pen again. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to paint with you or draw in with you um, my lines and my indication of bark here on this tree and then I'm going to uh, turn the camera off so you don't have to watch it three times and do the other two trees. So just some light lines some areas darker than others. Spaced out as you see fit. Some coming from the left, some from the right. Okay, so simple as that. Now I'm going to, now my gouache is quite thick here, so I'm having to work my micron pen a little more than I would normally. Now I'm going to bring in some branches. And I have the tendency to either lift the branches a little bit up versus hanging down. Uh, just because aesthetically it just looks a little more pleasing. No other th reason than that. And not too, I mean, not going straight up like this, but tendency to uh, to go upward somewhat. And getting thin, thinner as we get further along on the brush, on the yes branch. 
some branches just wispy lines okay that's quite a substantial branch All right. Okay, so I'm going to, um, actually what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring in some gouache once again with a smaller brush and make some snow here since this is a winter scene. Just going to coat my size three brush with some gouache. And just give the indication of some snow on these branches. and some at the base of the tree, some sort of small snowdrifts. I'm going to bring a bit of that up in our tree line too. Just with a light touch, not too much. Just to indicate some little bit of drifts. Some coming out into our water. Okay. So now I'm going to do my other two trees and then we'll come back. So my trees are done. Now I'm going to come in and give the indication of some twigs and branches and bush coming up from the foreground. And we're going to add to this some winter flowers or, or early spring, you know, some flowers. So just using my micron pen again. This is the... Uh, joy of using ink and wash versus just the uh, 
just the paint. Okay, I'm going to come in with my number three again and dot in some flowers. And I'm using red simply because it stands out so nicely. A little fuller in some areas than others, different heights. Okay, and I think I will use some white. So I think I'll bring in the gouache again. I have still have some here. Just rolling my number three in the gouache help make a point you know make my tip thinner and fill it with uh, paint now Clearly, I'm not formally trained, so this is my idea of ink and wash in the style I like to work. You'll develop your own style. And if I break rules, well, say la vie. <laughs> Okay, well, I'm happy with that. That will do. Although I do find the red standing out quite a bit, so I'm not sure I like it to stand out that much. So I'm going to bring in this white and just sort of offset it a little bit. Okay, that's a little better. It was just a little too stark. There was a little too much contrast there. All right, I think we're done. And I say that all the time, and then I go in and add more. <laughs> but I think we might be done. Let me just see how we're doing. We're, uh, yeah, let's do our reveal. Now, this is, like I said, not the us usual art arches paper that I use it's another less expensive cotton paper but with that comes the idea that uh, it can be difficult to remove my tape without lifting some of the fibers from my uh, paper now I've measured this out to fit a five by seven so anything under the tape is not going to show in my painting because it's going to have a mat over it. So I'm not overly concerned. I just don't like the idea of lifting up some of the fibers. So let's go from here. I tried not to rub my tape down too hard. So there's our little painting. Pretty, eh? Okay, I do have a mat here to show you what it might look like with a mat on it. So that's, let me see, get this right. That's just about it. 
So I hope you enjoyed that. I hope you picked up some tips and learned a little bit. Like I said, I'm not formally trained, so this is uh, this is just my idea of a little uh, ink and wash painting. So we'd love a thumbs up. It makes all the difference to our channels. Those of us who have channels um, need the thumbs up because YouTube recognizes that and promotes your channel a little bit more. And where I'm a small channel, um, I struggle with the big guys. <laughs> so any little bit helps. Um, comments, thumbs up. And yeah, so I hope you enjoyed that and I hope you learned something from, from me today. And uh, you folks have an absolutely fabulous rest of your day. Bye for now.